Mobility is a major benefit of virtualization. So let's take a look at how virtualizing our infrastructure can provide us with these mobility benefits. So why is mobility such an important benefit? Well, maybe we have multiple hosts and we've got many virtual machines running on all of these hosts and the workload isn't very balanced, right? In this case, we see host one, which has three virtual machines running on it. We may want to migrate some of those VMs to host two to equalize the workload on those two hosts. So that's reason number one. We want to make sure that the resource utilization of our hosts is fairly evenly utilized. If host one is running really low on memory, maybe we move some VMs to some other host. And ideally, I'd love to do that without any downtime. Do some sort of live migration or vMotion to take a running VM and move it from one physical server to another with no downtime. So that's one reason we might want to migrate VMs. Another reason is maybe we need to perform some sort of maintenance. Maybe I need to install some physical memory in a host or do some other sort of physical maintenance. And so I know I'm going to have downtime on a host. So I migrate all of the VMs to another host, perform my maintenance, install my memory or whatever it is I need to do. And maybe I'm installing patches and I need to reboot. I can migrate all the VMs off of that host, do whatever I need to, and then bring them back once the host is back up. So those are two of the most common reasons to migrate virtual machines is the number one, give us some sort of performance benefit or number two, avoid downtime. So let's take a look at an example migration. And here we have a virtual machine running on host one. We see a host up here with, with a VM running on it. And I want to do something to this host. Maybe I'm patching it. If we're talking about a VMware ESXi host, maybe Update Manager has just installed patches and I need to reboot this host. So in that case, ideally I'd like to get all the VMs off of it first. So what I can do is initiate a migration of this VM from host one to host two. But there's a few things that need to be in place in order for this to happen. Number one, and most important on the list, shared storage. This VM is not just running on the host. It also has a set of files, right? It's got a virtual disk. It's got a configuration file. It might have snapshots. If I'm going to take that VM and move it down here to host two, host two needs to be able to access that set of files. Right. So that is my first prerequisite. If I'm going to move that VM from one host to another, that VM's files must be available. The second requirement that I have as a prerequisite is that this virtual machine has a virtual NIC on it. This is a VM that has network access and that virtual NIC is connected to a virtual switch and it's probably on a VLAN and the virtual switch is connected to a physical switch and the virtual machine is addressed accordingly. Right? This VM exists on some VLAN. It's got some port group on the virtual switch. If I move this VM down to this ESXi host, and the virtual switch there does not have a matching configuration and that network is now unavailable, that's not going to work out very well. So I've got to have a compatible network on both of these hosts. Basically the way you want to think about it is the VM right now is running on host one. I don't want the VM to see anything different when it moves to host two. Right? I want the compatible processors, I want, if they're AMD on host one, I want them to be AMD on host two. If they're Intel on host one, I want them to be Intel on host two, right? I want these two hosts to be pretty much as close to identical as I can possibly get them. And definitely when it comes to the network and storage configuration, they need to match up. And then finally, I need some way to copy the VM from host one to host two. 
So we're going to have a special network that takes all of the contents of memory, takes what's currently happening on this VM, and creates a copy of it here on the other host. Okay, so now that I've covered my prerequisites, the rest of this is actually pretty straightforward, right? A copy of the VM is going to be created on a destination host. In this case, let's use a little bit of VMware terminology. We're going to use something called a VM kernel port to create a network. And that network is going to be used to create a copy of this VM on the destination host. And when that copy is complete, we will capture everything that's changed in that VM during that copy process. We call this a memory bitmap. All of the contents of that memory bitmap are transferred over to the new copy of the VM. And that now becomes my live running virtual machine. And the downtime is so minute that it's not even perceptible to the users of my application. This is called a live migration or a vMotion of a virtual machine as I take it while it's running and move it from one host to another. And this opens up all sorts of flexibility for me because I can move VMs wherever I need them to be. The other door that this opens to me is I can do automated load balancing. I can group together hosts in what's called a cluster. And once I group those hosts together, what I want to do is allow my virtual machines to take advantage of the resources of the cluster as a whole. I want to consider all four of these hosts kind of interchangeable. And I don't really care which host my VMs are running on. If VMs need to move around to equalize workload, let's allow that to happen. And let's allow it to happen automatically. That's the purpose of automatic load balancing. In VMware's terminology, this is called Distributed Resource Scheduler, or DRS. In order to allow virtual machines to automatically be live migrated from host to host for the purposes of load balancing across those hosts.